My name is Adrian Reber. I work for Red Hat. I'm involved in process migration, which is the basis of container migration for at least 12 years now. Um, since 2012, this is always using the tool Creu to checkpoint restore processes and containers. And since 2015, I'm mainly focusing on checkpointing, restoring um, containers and, and migrating them. So um, the agenda for today's talk is, I first want to talk a bit about the background, about checkpointing, where it came from, uh, how, it is, how it is used, and more about how it's used in the use cases. I want to give a few demos, how you can use checkpoint restore with containers. And then the last point is what's next, um, especially in the context of, of Kubernetes and how we can, how we want to continue with checkpoint restore there. Um, so as I mentioned it, today is um, everything I'm saying is about CRIU, checkpoint restore in user space, the name for CRIU in user space um, is because in the early 2000s there were approaches to get checkpoint restore running in, in Linux and they were different approaches. One was an external kernel module, which was never merged upstream. Then there was a library intercepting system calls, all different things to get checkpoint restore running in Linux. And then there was an in-kernel um, approach to do everything in the kernel, which would be nice for the user. But the patch set was about 100 patches and, and it was touching almost every subsystem of the kernel. So the kernel maintainers didn't really like it and it wasn't merged at the time. I was working with that patch set at some point. So it was able to checkpoint restore processes with that patch set with that in the completely in the kernel that was working. But as it was not um, accepted, a new approach came and because the previous was in the kernel, the new one is in user space, and that's how Creo got its name, Checkpoint Restore, in user space. There are multiple integrations um, of Creo in existing container run engines, runtimes, orchestrators, and I think the first one I have to mention is the integration in OpenVZ. The company behind it, they wanted to migrate containers. They had a solution to migrate their containers, but they were using uh, Im implementations which were again not upstreamed in the kernel and say, so they wanted something which um, the whole community could, could use. And so they uh, started developing Creo and that's how we got Creo, which also means Creo is focused on containers in contrast to many other checkpoint restore implementation, which were coming out of the high performance computing area. So um, Creo is for containers. Um, one interesting integration of Creo is um, Creo is used in, in Borg. That's Google Containers Engine, and we we upstream Creo have been told by by Google at a couple of conferences how they use it and what they basically do with um, the containers is they for long running containers they use Creo to migrate those containers to other nodes if the current node has low resources. And so before migrating containers, they just killed the container and restarted it somewhere else. All the work was lost. And now they just migrated from one node to another. And the work done in the long running, low priority container um, continues. Um, from what we've been told, this is things like um, YouTube video recoding, things like this, which are running in the background and which have no interactive users. They said they also tried um, Creo for interactive sessions where people are using, I, I don't know what, maybe Google Mail or things like this, but the downtime during migration is like three to four seconds. So it's too much to, um, to use it for interactive sessions because then it was just hang for a couple of seconds and they don't want that. Then there's Creo integration in Lexi and LexD for a long time. Um, they started very early to integrate um, checkpoint restore support there. Then it exists in Docker for a couple of years. Then there is also integration in Podman. This is something I have been working on for the last couple of years to make sure Creo works in combination with Podman. 
And the work in Podman was kind of a preparation to get it working in, in Cryo, the um, container engine. Um, and this is the pull request where I'm now working almost two years now to get it merged into Cryo. And the problem is, is not the Cryo developers don't want it. Um, it first has to be merged in, in Kubernetes so that the CRA API is updated. And once that's there, the changes um, can be added to, to, to Cryo to the container engine level. So there's a ticket in, in Kubernetes. It was opened in 2015 and it was asking for container live migration. And so it's now seven years that the ticket is open and it's still not possible to migrate containers in, in, in Kubernetes. But uh, my hope is with the work we are currently trying to do, um, maybe we are getting a, a little step closer to my container migration in Kubernetes. So the current um, situation is <laughs> when I wrote a proposal, I said, now that we can checkpoint containers, what's next? So at the time I wrote a proposal, or, so to get something into Kubernetes, um, you have to write a Kubernetes enhancement proposal. And so I had an enhancement proposal and a code, it was already um, to be reviewed and merged and the cap was merged and my assumption was if the cap was merged for the release 124 then the code would also be merged for 124 but it wasn't merged until the last day and so the title is not totally correct but um, I have been told that it will be merged for 125 an early merge hopefully and so um, the first link is the cap that was merged the second link is the pull request to update a cap from 125, uh, from 124 to 125. And the third link is the actual code change in, in Kubernetes um, to implement a checkpoint restore. We are calling it forensic container checkpointing because the idea is we want to start with a very small use case of container checkpointing um, to not introduce too much changes at the same time. Um, the forensic container, the idea behind forensic container checkpointing is that you have a container, you think there might be something not correctly working or it might be under attack. You can take a checkpoint of the container without a container knowing that it was checkpointed. It will continue running. You can take the checkpoint and analyze it in a sandbox environment somewhere else. Um, even if it's called forensic container checkpointing in one of the demos, I will show later how forensic container checkpointing can be used to migrate a container from one Kubernetes host to another host. So um, that's that's possible with the current state of the of the cap. So the next thing I want to talk about are a couple of use cases. Um, why um, to use container checkpoint restore? Um, container checkpoint restore is a bit of it's, it's not what you think, what you expect from a container, because the idea of a container, it's, it's stateless, you can stop it, you can kill it whenever you want, and it has no impact on your data, state, whatever. But the uh, um, truth is that there are containers that are stateful, and if you can checkpoint them, um, it can make your life easier, maybe, hopefully. So the first use case is reboot and save state. This is a really simple use case. I have a system, there's running a kernel, that's the blue kernel, and there's running a container on it, that's the red thing, and now I want to reboot the system, but my container takes a long time to start up, so I really don't like to rebooting the system and have to wait like five minutes until the container is ready again, because it needs to re read a lot of data from disk and initialize libraries, something like this. So I, what I can do is I can take a, I can upgrade the, the kernel of the system, for example. I can take a checkpoint of the container. The container is now written to disk. I can reboot the host. The host comes back. Now it says a green kernel, so it's different. And then the container is restored and keeps on running just as before. So now to the demo. So I'm, I'm demoing this using, using Podman, um, but um, the, uh, for, for Kubernetes, this, it would be difficult. I could do it on a cryo level. Um, at some point, I had um, checkpoint restore implemented in kubectl drain. So if you do a kubectl drain on your local node, all containers were checkpointed. And on, on startup, they were all restored. 
But this was all in, in previous proof of concept. So um, Podman has it working out of the box right now. So that's why I'm showing it in Podman. So I say Podman run. My container, it's a really simple container. The important thing, it's a stateful container. So I can access the container by saying, uh, accessing its IP address. So and it's, it returns a number and increases it. So it's stateful and, and, and really simple. So now I say podman container checkpoint. L for work on the latest container. So now the checkpoint has been created. Now I'm trying to access the container again. It doesn't exist anymore because it was stopped. And so now I will just reboot the system. Um, so, so this system is a RHEL 8 something system. And the other demos are running on Fedora 35. So it seems it's up again really so fast. Yeah, so trying to access the, the service, it's still not running. Now I can say podman container restore latest. The container was restored and now I can access it. So it's now continuing at the state it was, was before. So this is the one use case. The other use case is um, quick startup. It's, it's again, uh, same thing. You have a container which takes a long time to initialize and you want to start it faster. So what you can do, you can wait for the first initialization, um, create a checkpoint of it, and then create multiple copies of the same container in your system. So we've been contacted um, by, um, what was it? I think, yeah, MATLAB. So MATLAB has something as a service. And they actually, currently, they do checkpoint inside of Kubernetes privileged containers, um, complicated way, but because their container takes like five, sec five minutes to start up and with checkpoint, they can get it up in like five seconds. So the customers don't have to wait if they start their containers from the checkpoint. Um, same host as before. So now I have, um, Again, my container running here. Now I say podman container checkpoint latest. And then I say keep running because I don't want to stop the container I'm checkpointing. And then I'm also saying I want to export the checkpoint to a file. Keep running. Okay, it's leave running. leave running. So now the original container still is running. I can access it. Five, six, seven. Now I can um, restore a copy of the container. Container restore import. So this will now fail because the net, what, what um, the container engine does, it tries to restore the container with the same name and the same ID. This doesn't work because it's still in use by the original container. So we can just say, we want to give it a new name. We ca call it counter one and counter two. And now we should have three container running. Yeah, we have the, the original container and counter two and counter one. And now I can access all of them I can say counter one, it continues from five, six, and counter two, also five, six, and the original container is also still running. So um, that's how you can um, cre create copies of your running containers, and if it's taking a long time to start up, you can skip the long startup time. And a combination of all of those um, use cases kind of is the uh, the container live migration. So you have a container on your source system. You want to get a stateful copy of the container to the destination system. So you, again, you take a copy of your container, you do a checkpoint, transfer it to the next to the destination system, and restore it multiple times. And I have so it's still running here. So I have uh, Kubernetes running here. And there's no container running. So what I want to do, I want to um, run a pod with two containers and I want to checkpoint this container and transfer it to another system. 
So this system is now not running locally. This is like 1,500 kilometers away, and I want to do a stateful migration of the container from Kubernetes far away to my local Kubernetes in the VM. So I will um, start this part. So I just say, I cannot see it. Apply. So now um, it will probably create the containers. Yeah, so there's the first container. So I have, I have actually two counter examples. So the Wildfly is in, in Java, and the one I'm migrating is in, oh, interesting. Um, and the one I'm migrating is in, um, is in, in Python. So now uh, I cannot, so there's this one, okay. Um, so I can access the container, I can again say curl, and then I say, <sighs> to get the IP address. So it's the same thing. It says counter one, uh, counter zero, counter one. In addition, it reads a file which is mounted, which is locally mounted from the host. I can write something else to that file. So the file is on my host and it's bind mounted into the container and then it just changes depending on what, what I have here. So the, the content of the file will not be migrated because this is specific to the host. It's the container is running on but the container will be migrated and the state of the container uh, will also be migrated. So to, to migrate a container or to checkpoint a container using the forensic checkpointing um, implementation. So what we have done is we have, the decision was to make a kubelet only API to checkpoint a container. We haven't extended it um, to, to kubectl because um, the implications of taking a checkpoint are not one totally understood yet, probably. The problem is if you take a checkpoint, you have all the memory pages on disk, and if there's a secret in the memory pages, then you now have them on disk, and maybe it's now easier for someone to access those. So currently, it's a kubelet-only um, API. It's called Checkpoint. Then we give it the namespace of the container, then the pod, it calls counters, and then we say we want to checkpoint the container counter, and then we tell it to write it to an image called localhost checkpoint test, test 15. And now it's creating the checkpoint. And if I now look at the images on my local system, I see there is now a, a checkpoint image in my local, in my local image store. And it's eight megabytes the checkpoint, so it's it's not not a big checkpoint. And now I can uh, just log into a registry, and then I will push the checkpoint. It's called fifteen. No, fifteen and fifteen. So this will now push the image to a registry. And it's pushed. And now I'll, so this is now the, the remote system, Fedora 2, and now I'm switching to Fedora 1. Uh, no containers running, and I have, again, a, um, a specification here where I'm starting again a pod with two containers. One container is still the original container from the registry, not a checkpoint. This is the Java counter, and the other one is now the checkpoint image uh, in the remote registry, and I will change this to 15. And now I will say apply and uh, cry control PS. Okay, so the first container has been started. Now it's probably pulling the checkpoint image. Come on, do something. Ah, okay. <laughs> and so now I see it um, has uh, created the second container. This should be from the checkpoint. And if I now uh, access this container, now it's called FE6F. So now it shouldn't print out counter zero, it should print out counter 
I don't know, five or something like this, four. So, and, and this is again, the, the prefix is coming from the local file here, which is um, on, on the system. I can change this again. You see the bind mount is specific to the host and the state specific to the container, which was, which was migrated. Okay, so this was the, the container migration use case. And now to the actual <laughs> topic of the talk, what's next? So um, currently, assuming that uh, the, I, I was told that a cap and a code will be merged soon, so um, we can migrate, uh, kind of migrate containers. We, so we can checkpoint containers and with the trick to use the run command to uh, automatically restore a container. If it's a checkpoint image, we can migrate containers. So the next uh, thing would be um, we thought about is maybe uh, we need to extend um, um, the checkpoint command to, to kubectl so that you can actually checkpoint a, checkpoint a container without going to um, the kubelet API. Um, this is one of the things we want to discuss with the community um, um, next. So then there is um, another thing which we initially thought about. We were talking about a restore command. So at this point, we are not sure if we actually need a restore command for containers at least, because we, uh, it seems to work pretty good if we just go through create and start. Um, to, to restore a container. There seems no longer a reason to create a restore command. Um, this was initially an idea we had, and then um, the next big step was to uh, checkpoint restore complete pods. So this is um, with the pull request I mentioned of cryo. This already works in cryo. It's, it's a pretty simple process. We just loop over all containers in the pod checkpoint them all, collect some additional metadata for the infrastructure container, and on restore, we recreate the, uh, a completely new infrastructure container with the shared namespaces it had before, and then we just restore the pods in the shared namespaces. Um, this, this works um, pretty good at this point, I would say. So um, the problem is to restore a pod, we would think need to think of a new way. So either we, because I don't think it's possible to specify an image to a pod in the pod specification YAML file. So we would need to have a, a separate restore command where we can tell um, Kubernetes. So I'm giving you this image of a pod and this contains everything you need to know about a pod just tell it to the container engine that it will do the right things, something like this. So, um, um, and then we, of course, need to correctly push um, the pod also to an image registry or something like this. So this is um, more the future which we haven't thought about so in, in clear steps yet. So then at some point we could think about a kubectl migrate command where we can say, okay, I want to migrate this pod from this node to another node without um, going manually through the registry so that some tool does it for us automatically. Um, and the last step would probably be um, the scheduler integration. If this all works up to this point, um, maybe at some point we can have the scheduler decide, okay, resources are getting low on this node. There's a low priority pod running here. I'm just migrating it to, to another, part, uh, another node which has more resources and the container doesn't have to be stopped and, and lose state if it's a stateful container. So with this, I'm, I'm at the end. So this is um, the summary is Creo can checkpoint and restore containers. Um, it's integrated in different container engines and runtimes for a long time now already. It's used in production. Um, the use cases I show was reboot into new kernel um, without losing container state, start multiple copies, migrate running containers. Um, this is all um, waiting on the, on the final approval of the, of the cap for 125, hopefully. And currently uh, we are restoring using the run or the create and start command. Thanks for your time.